Okay, very good morning. It's Thursday 13th of February, so I hope you're doing well. I'm going to go over an update on the, the virus because it did see a move overnight in the Asia-Pacific market, so I'll get you up to speed of why that occurred and what the latest status is in China. Uh, also going to have a quick look at the Euro and Euro-Swiss. Right, an interesting chart that I saw someone putting around on Twitter uh, on my way into work this morning, and I thought I'd tie that into some Euro discussion. Uh, for the briefing uh, and then also an update on the UK cabinet announcements that are going to be coming out a bit later on today. Is that going to be meaningful or not for price? Um, starting off though, let's have a look at the the charts and probably the most clearly evident thing that you can see here is these two center charts, the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P as I've got it here and you can see with the DAX this morning has just drifted lower in the European Open. Um, when it comes to the S&P, you can see quite a sharp downtick that was seen uh, just before midnight, if you were looking at London time. So you can see this drop here. And why did that occur? Well, actually, if you look at the other asset classes to see the general risk, you can almost connect the dots. So equities blipped down, the US 10-year blipped up and grinded higher, and then gold was bid and then started to move higher during the Asia-Pacific session. So very much almost a reversal of what we had yesterday. You remember in the briefing this time yesterday, we were talking about the fewest number of reported cases of the coronavirus in Hubei, the province of China, which is kind of the epicenter of the virus outbreak. Uh, it was the fewest reported cases in a month. However, this is the complete opposite movement. And why has that happened? Well, what's come out overnight is the Hubei National Health Commission have said it would now start including cases confirmed by clinical diagnosis, which refers to using CT imaging scans to diagnose patients, alongside what was originally those confirmed by the existing method of nucleic acid testing kits. So this has then seen a 15,000 uh, uplift in the number of people in reported cases. And so if we quickly flip over to this graphic now, uh, we've added uh, another 200 or so to the death count, and the total confirmed now is north of 60,000. So overnight, you've had a bit of a, a risk-off move. However, this morning, it's been a fairly tame European Open thus far. My initial interpretation here is that don't forget we were trading up at record high levels when it comes to the likes of some of the US indices. And if you actually put it into context, the move that we've had, when you start looking on a broader time frame of the likes of the S&P, I don't think it's quite time to, to panic just yet. In fact, I think far from it. And even if we did get a bit of a pullback, we start moving further down, you know, there are plenty uh, of strong, good levels, I think, on any pullback in this S&P 500. And even if we did drop, I think, 10, 20 points, uh, again, I don't think that that's crisis mode on this virus uh, and I think largely a lot of the market somewhat prepared which might explain why this move has been relatively moderate at this point because a lot of people obviously were already questioning the validity of the numbers that China were putting out and I think a, a move up of 15,000 doesn't really um, break the mold of surprise too much it's not like it's been lifted by 200,000 for example, or 150,000. So at the moment, I think that, yes, a little bit of a knock to prices. Um, you can see oil also just a touch lower, but still up quite firmly from the, the gains that were seen yesterday. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not so sure that you're going to get a, a continuation of this throughout the session, but time will tell. I think the better way is without... Uh, not forcing your opinion. Let's wait till the US come in because they wouldn't have seen this news yet and they won't till about 11, 11.30 our time when they start to come into, into the market. And how do they perceive this situation uh, will be quite key. But I, I still kind of am looking at this that if we did see a concerted pullback, I think for the equity players, just more reason to get long again at this point. Um, the other chart that I just wanted to have a look at was Euro dollar. Uh, these are the headlines you're seeing this morning. Euro slumping to its lower since 2017 with economic woes in focus. Uh, and this is a graphic of the euro-dollar pair. And as you can see, 
um, having broken through that period of the kind of late summer lows that we had in euro dollar taking us all the way back down to here on the left hand side from 2017 now a lot of different things going on here uh, a lot of the focus of course though has been on germany as well as overall general weakness in european economic data risks around a no deal disorderly brexit still exist of course political stress it's kind of like spin the wheel and pick your country in europe from italy to spain now to what's happening in Ireland as well. There's lots of changes happening and uncertainties and political stalemates. Uh, and then one of the key things, as I just said, is the German economy. And that's been the one uh, that's of particular interest just given its economic contribution to the euro area. And this is going to come into even sharper focus tomorrow because tomorrow you get the German GDP figure. Now, this is a look at the, the report I issued uh, the, the macro menu piece that I deliver on a Monday. And this is looking at German GDP quarter and quarter. So Bloomberg economics forecast is for a contraction in that figure. And as you can see here, it would be the second contraction in three quarters for Germany. Uh, and so you know that kind of engine room in Europe, so to speak, somewhat stalling and that you know manufacturing uh, contraction that we've been seeing for a period of time companies still relatively um, unsure about the prospects of the economic future, ongoing with some internal domestic political stresses of their own, and then throw in the threat of US tariffs as well, particularly on the automotive sector. And it's almost like the perfect cocktail to weigh on Europe. And yeah, expectations gradually shifting. Uh, is Lagarde going to have to do more in some fashion in, in time? And I think tomorrow's data is going to be quite key as well for that near-term direction of the of the euro. Euro Swiss. This is one I, I did want to bring up, and this is looking at Euro Swiss over the last. Well, you're looking at the last several years here, so eight or nine years, and this is a this level at 120 is one that I know will 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 remember very fondly. I remember that day because actually at the time. It was me and my brother who were sat on the analyst desk. And I remember we were just sat back. It was, I remember, it was kind of possibly late morning, something like that. There was no, nothing major coming out, so we'd be sitting back just chatting, but we're kind of half an eye watching all the, the news wires. And then a headline dropped, and uh, the SMB, the Swiss National Bank, dropped their currency floor. And at that point, I remember, because you, there was a period... You can see here, so if we look back to t late 2014, you can see there was a period of months where we just sat at 120. Uh, and a very um, uh, common play at the time was any time Euro Swiss came down to 120, all these prop traders would just buy it because it would be defended by the Swiss National Bank. They would actively look to weaken their own currency and be an export nation. You know, if you think of Nestle, Swatch, these are the biggest companies in the Swiss SMI index. And so what was happening was you'd hit 120, they would weaken their currency, and you'd basically get a free 50 pips, 25 pips every time. So every time it hit the floor, you just, you just go long. <laughs> and it was happening every time. So you can imagine, after this was happening for months and months and months, and people were getting these free trades almost, everyone would load up as soon as we hit 120. However, as you can tell then, the, the magnitude of longs at 120 was pretty massive. And rightly so, because if the central bank had going to defend it, you got no, there's no downside. However, then this headline dropped, and I remember us seeing it. We kind of jumped out of our skins, and it just said, the SMB dropped their currency floor of 120. And that was the move that happened. And it happened like bang, like that. And... Uh, good for us, actually, you know, we saw it, we said it, we got it out there uh, so fast that, you know, fortunately for people like Will, and this was pre amplify or this was pre-me working at Amplify, that was his biggest ever trading day uh, by a country mile because he was able to just be alerted to the news. And that's the beauty of the squawk, I guess, these unexpected black swan events. Now, now one of the things that was bad for me, though, is that some of you might remember the broker Alpari. Alpari used to pay 
uh, the company I used to work for, a lot of money for, for our services, and they went bust on that one single move. And they were, at the time, one of the biggest brokers in Europe. And because they weren't appropriately hedged for that move, completely wiped them out in, in a matter of seconds. So it was pretty, um, pretty amazing. And actually, if Mr. Alpari is watching, you still owe me a lot of money. So, because you didn't pay your fees, because you went bankrupt. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, a anyway, the, you know, this move was, was quite interesting. And if you actually look at Euroswiss, and from a technical perspective, look where we got to in 2018. You know, this is kind of technical analysis 101 here when you're looking at this chart. We come right up to 120, absolutely perfectly on that previous protection level that we had back in 2012 protected again in 2014 the break came up to that level but interestingly look where we are right now now the swiss national bank don't have a um, an actual uh, 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 verbalized floor in play in this day and age however just look where we are right now in euro swiss and by product then of euro weakness the swiss is strengthening and that's not good for the swiss companies because as I said, they're exporters and we're now down heavily from where we were when they were protecting before. So what's quite interesting, I think, from a longer term perspective here on this Euro Swiss chart is we're right on the tipping point and any further breakdown here, then yeah, it's gonna be super interesting to see. If we break through those 2016 um, and the 2017 levels, you know, where do we go to then? You know, does that open up a door to 104, 102, this kind of price activity we had back down in 2015? And if, if that euro dollar pair has now broken through that meaningful part in 2019, and that imparts more euro weakness, and we start to get a bit of a technical break and a run here, you know, the euro Swiss chart also looks quite, quite appetizing uh, as well at this point. Okay, final thing on my side. Um, this requires no more than probably 30 seconds to explain because it's not going to be a market moving thing uh, but just so you're aware when the headlines start dropping uh, Boris Johnson the UK Prime Minister is to reshuffle the post Brexit UK cabinet today so ministers expected to leave include culture secretary Nikki Morgan stayed on as a temporary measure to oversee the review of the Huawei uh, 5G network issue that the government's been going through in the last few weeks probably one of the most recognized ones uh, you remember that kind of bellowing chap, the Attorney General Jeffrey Cox. Um, he may be replaced and moved to another role. Um, people, the whole reason why this isn't going to be market moving is the Chancellor, Sajid Javid, the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Rabb, the Cabinet, Office Minister, Michael Gove, the Transport Secretary, Grant Chaps, they're all staying. So nothing changes in terms of the, the, the more senior positions. A lot of this is being tabled in the press as a move about equality, more women in, in more senior positions and so on. So looking at the pound though this morning, um, it has seen a little bit of a blip up. Now I haven't seen anything specific why that has happened. A few people have been banding about the UK RICS house price balance data. It did come out, uh, that, com that data comes out very early in the morning um, and it showed a plus 17 reading, in fact the highest since May of 2017. So again, like some of the other UK economic data points we've had, a bit of a post-election bounce on a bit of clarity, at least short term, over the ability to pass then this Brexit initial part into the implementation phase has just led to then the highest since t Jan 2016 of vendor instructions uh, that we've had. So I don't think, you know, I, c I can't say that I've ever seen UK housing data, you know, apart from perhaps the depths of the financial crisis really move markets. So I think that's a little bit of trying to curve fit a bit of a reason. I don't think there is one other than, you know, sometimes you just got to go with the flow and it's moving higher. It's come to a natural point of perhaps a bit of resistance on that R1 and that previous high seen yesterday afternoon. I don't, I wouldn't read too much and overinterpret that. Uh, to be honest with you, euro dollar though has been clawing a little higher as the dollar has just seen a bit of weakness as Europe has come into the market. All right, in terms of the, the session, what have we got on the agenda? Um, very much more US focused. Do keep a half an eye out for their IEA monthly oil report, but, but I guess in a way 
the cat's out the bag somewhat because the OPEC report came out and obviously they've slashed their demand on just given the circumstance that is happening globally at the moment and particularly China on the back of the virus uh, and that seemingly didn't really move markets and the reason there because pretty much as expected really um, it's not it's not that surprising um, so I'd expect pretty similar worth keeping an ear out for but maybe not that market moving more so I'd say from a bigger top level macro theme how do the US perceive this coronavirus update to their methodology of numbers and yes it sounds pretty punchy on the numbers but I actually think the market will, will brush this off is my, my kind of baseline view uh, into the afternoon US CPI of course always important uh, weekly jobless claims as well from a speaker's perspective got a couple uh, the chief economist of the ECB is speaking, uh, Lane at midday, ECB's Panetta at five. Remember, now part of the uh, the executive committee on the ECB. And then a few as others in the evening, if you were to stick around late. Anyone in the US, Feds Williams speaking uh, at New York Bankers Association. That'll be at 4.30 Chicago time. Uh, any fixed income traders, you've got um, about four to five billion euros worth of range of Italian supply coming to market with 19 billion in a 30 year bond auction from the US Treasury. All right, that is it. So wish you all a good day. And for the guys in stage two, I'll be giving you a lecture on uh, economic data a bit later on this morning. Otherwise, I'll see you in the chat room. Thanks very much. Yeah, hi guys, hope, uh, hope we're all, all well. We'll start off with the, the pound as it's just you know, coming up to a relatively interesting level, uh, not far from that 130, which we were talking about yesterday just being uh, a key line in the sand because you can see if we go back to and try to get this year in the picture, the amount of times we, we have previously found support around this zone, we break through it, come back, we test it yesterday, sell us take over, and look, we're back there again. So it's key. Uh, key point to, to take into account if we get above there fine let's get a little push and, and start targeting some of the other breakdown areas around 130.20 uh, as well in the futures but for, for the moment first real test of that this morning just coming off a touch um, but certainly the, the balls will be liking the look of that uh, if we can push through there to the downside when we do start thinking you know what this pound's going to start pushing lower again well, maybe if we can break through uh, this trend line, this would be uh, how I'd feel pretty confident, especially if it marks up along with the 129.56, which was the low, you might be able to see it on my camera, uh, low of the 4th, high of the 10th, then the high uh, of the morning of the 11th and the afternoon lows and yesterday's low as well. So key, key zone uh, there for the, for the cable. And it's all, it reminds me of... Um, of Euro USD last year when everyone would get excited every single little push we'd have in Euro it'd break a trend line and come all the way back low and make a new low for what would be the year so for the pound if we get above you know that 130 area let's push on fine can deal with that uh, continuing to push on uh, a bit if we do come down and test this trend line uh, a break of that I feel we could get a bit of an unwind and obviously you've got some half decent profit targets near the, the lows of the year there the Euro well, we might as well start it on the, the weekly chart just to, to say what every single person on Twitter has said. We are the lowest we've been uh, for quite some time now. Let's just draw a, a horizontal line on that low. You can see here almost looking to start filling the, the gap from uh, you know, Macron, the first round French elections. So we're talking April 2017 uh, on the futures there. We, we had last or we had traded there. We actually did, of course, trade that in May as well. A break of these lows, you've got to start thinking about, um, you know, maybe a bit more momentum coming into the gap field. And of course, just get that on your charts because if it does push lower, you know, you've got to have the, the longer time frame on to see where that level of support, in theory, could come in. And you don't want to be caught out uh, selling just before it uh, or not taking profit on it. Uh, let's have a, a quick look. This is how we're trading today. Just having a little. Uh, push to the upside got a bit of dollar weakness uh, come in if we have a look at the the way this is traded you know there'll certainly be people eyeing up the pivot as a level of resistance I think you're going to want to see a bit of price action confirming that uh, before wanting to get in short just considering how clearly this trend has come and we've obviously hit a very important technical point um, and you can see 18 
10.10802 is, is roughly where that gap would be, by the way. So if we do get a push on with lower these lows, the continuation strategy you know, isn't the worst idea in the world. Looking for something like this, break through, take it in, and then can go in as well. Uh, but the pivot key to the upside other than that, you've also got, I, I believe, 109.24, pretty well respected level on both yesterday and what day would that be? Tuesday um, as well. So the pivot, first sort of real resistance point that the balls will want to take it over uh, and then up towards 109.24. Can we really start pushing on and on and on? Perhaps, but I think, you know, the there's been a couple of times where people may have thought that's the case, only to be dealt with uh, uh, a bit of reality as this market comes lower uh, again. But keep an eye as well if we do push on at any potential trend lines that's just been guiding price over the last few sessions. Um, but yeah, I, I think pivot just before the R1 uh, or the continuation strategy for shorts at the moment don't look too bad. Aussie dollar uh, has had a, a decent you know, little few days coming down overnight due to the the China uh, headlines. I, I agree with Ant. It's, I mean, it would be quite funny, I think, if stocks were to to find a, a medium-term top last night uh, on these these numbers, which have kind of been proved to be, you know, not all they seem. It would almost be the fake news uh, has has won against this market. But that said, bringing it on to the Aussie, is this now an opportunity to get long uh, again? Uh, so there's a couple of ways to have looked at it. You know, you, either you identified the uh, that low from 67.11, which was a previous high, really good level, to be honest, just on uh, multiple days. You can see why we found support there. So you're lying in the sand, happy to stay long if it stays above that. For example, if you're more medium term, probably worth getting on a bit of a trend as well, just below that. Uh, or if we have a look more intraday, the pivot today looks to be pretty key, most notably because you've got a couple of highs in there. You've got the low from yesterday. We broke down there in early hours. It's almost like we get above there, let's have a go at trying to get that double top from yesterday. So the pivot is key. If that holds up, if the pivot has hold up in equity is fine, we can drift back lower. But I think for now, if especially if we can have a bit of a bounce in the dollar to the upside of, of these pairs, then uh, above that pivot isn't a bad trade to, to look for uh, at all. Uh, let's have a, a quick look over to equities, which did come down in, in that early trade, really from... Uh, well, it's just after 11, wasn't it? 11.45, 11.30, we, we pushed lower. Um, I was playing football last night and, as usual, can't sleep uh, after I, I play. So I finish at 10, get home, eat, and then just uh, sit in bed wired, trying to get back to sleep or get to sleep. Uh, and, uh, and Twitter was, you know, it was, it was talking about it, but by no means was it, you know, really trying to get this to, to go lower and lower and lower. So I'm with Ant and I don't necessarily think it's... Uh, going to be you know, a big selling opportunity. That said, you've got to prepare for both. And if we have a, a quick look at some of these, these levels, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger, you can see why we found support on the S1 area. It's also a good level from uh, yesterday, kind of similar time to where we're trading now. If you get a breakthrough of that, then you can start thinking about you know, the market wants to come down to 33, 53, 51, the lows that we had back on Tuesday. Uh, also, we you know we found some resistance on, on this level previously, and, and you've got to go with the flow. If you think you know what, I like the idea of, of looking to to get long. You can see we're starting to kind of respect a bit of a trend here on the 15 minute. Hasn't quite made that one yet. You've also got a couple of lows in the mix, hence why we're just finding a bit of resistance. But a little break of of this, as long as the volume seems to be there, could be a little option. Uh, another key zone for it to get to is basically the pivot. You can see we had some resistance there last night. We broke uh, obviously through it and came back down to back up to test it. So if you're bullish, you know that's a that's an area I would say you want to want to consider. It's a, a similar picture across the board for U.S. equities. You know it's a case of trade what you see, not what you think. I you know I do think we we go higher, but if we if we push below these lows or in the S&P, then fine we can continue lower. If we push below that low in the Dow Jones it's you know you can see just how significant it is it's the high that we had back on Tuesday Wednesday morning we broke through there uh, just before the cash open we found support late last night and then now as well it's a key level below there you'd have a couple of stops from longs and people looking to, to get a bit more excited about a push down and you can see just to reiterate the S&P trend you can see that developing here uh, on the Dow uh, as well just obviously make sure you get that as 
as good as possible. Quick look at gold, which you would have expected overnight would have pushed higher, and it did. Just starting to find a bit of resistance around the, the R1. I'm just going to put this on a 60 minute, because you can see just the significance of, of this area in general. Um, let's just go back here. We look in the 10th overnight on the 9th, uh, 1580. Uh, quite uh, an important zone that you would want to consider to the downside if we were to push lower when would you get excited about you know this maybe correcting itself i would say this this point here 1575s the higher the overnight initial push and then support um, as that came through that would be something you'd look at and as well you know with these kind of moves if you do like with the S&P start developing some kind of trend the way gold can move on, on breaks of these trends uh, can lead to, to faster moves uh, higher or lower so just keep a, a watch on that and of course mark up any levels uh, to the downside uh, as well for potential supports above if we do get that push and equities you know do want to come under pressure or there's following following up with these numbers that maybe make it do make it do make it seem worse than it perhaps is obviously just be aware of all of this resistance around here from those uh, what we're talking here the third the beginning of the month the second uh, as well but for now I think this resistance level should hold for the morning it'll be interesting to see what happens at 15.75 oil to wrap it for a quick look over at the the dax had a nice day yesterday it had a nice day nice little push those lows just starting to seem a bit distant however obviously overnight uh, back to reality for for oil so those that are long it's not going to be straightforward move up of course um and we've just started to to find a bit of a, a flaw perhaps here you got uh you know what was the previous high we almost came back to test it late yesterday it's a zone you know whether you want to call it down to 82 to kind of where we're trading now and i think if that goes then you know the situation elsewhere is, is going to be worse and we can find drift lower but if you're bullish oil you know these dips like you've seen in aussie like you've seen in equities there's opportunities perhaps to get long uh long obviously if it, if it suits your your trade that you're looking at i was you know just possibly thinking about you know getting in more medium term adding to a position on oil if we get above this 52 area and we didn't quite do it yet i know it's a headline the reason for it but you can see here if i just draw and again i like a zone here you've got the low that we had back on the 27th got choppy but we found support on the 30th before breaking through a day later resistance on the third the fifth overnight sixth and then yesterday as well it's just starting to form a range. Are we drifting back lower to test the low of the year, or do we get a nice little break forward? And actually, uh, we're now looking towards the next key point around 55s, maybe. Uh, time will tell, of course, on that one. Let's have a look at the DAX. A couple of uh, um, you know big pushes lower in early trade before the open, but after eight o'clock, last 30 minutes, it's you know relatively choppy. You have to say, your line in the sand to the upside just like the S&P may well be, is, is the pivot. Good support yesterday, good support overnight. We broke through, have we found resistance yet? Not quite, so that will be uh, the key level for me. However, do, you know, just be aware if the euro was to you know, you know, strengthen massively, that might just uh, hold this back a bit. Uh, to the downside, really the, the low. So a lot of equities finding support technically on really what was the next level. And for me, that's a you know a sign that if it was to be a bigger move, we would clean them out quite quite quickly. So yes, it's a wait and see. You've got your lines in the sand. If you're not in a trade now, for example, for me, the DAX is if we can get above the pivot to go long below these levels, and you'd want a nice close, then fine, we could we could drift lower. But other than that, um, I think it's a, a wait and see. Uh, the euro just trying to push up. So keep an eye on that pivot. But like I said, I wouldn't necessarily have orders waiting to go short just yet. Uh, want a bit more confirmation on that hope you all have a, a good trading day we'll catch you in the chat and any questions of course please uh, do let us know